Hello everyone, it's Ryan at Dark Winter Moon in Boston, and today I'm going to be interviewing uh, a friend of mine, Brittany Bisbee Green, who is also a person I've worked with in the craft for a long time, and is a follower of Persephone. So today I'm going to be talking to her about her walk with Persephone. So I hope you enjoy this. We'll have lots of good information, lots of good questions for Brittany. And so how about we get started? So like I said, everyone, I'm interviewing Brittany today about her walk-in experiences with the goddess Persephone. Hello, Brittany, how are you? I'm good. Cool, cool. So are you ready to just get started with questions? Sure. Cool. So first question, why herself? Why Persephone? Um, well, I think the deities are drawn to individuals that remind them of themselves. Mm -hmm. So like energy being drawn to like energy. Right. Uh, share experience, uh, experiences with overprotective mothers and naivete and personal empowerment that grows from traumatic experiences. Yeah, so you would say that those are all qualities that both you possess and Persephone possesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so that kind of answers the next part of the question, but if you want to add anything, that's fine. Why do you think or feel that she chose you? Um, yeah, that basically answers it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much covered that part, yeah. Um, why do you personally feel drawn to her? Um, I feel like, um, I just, I just feel like we have a lot of things in common and, um, like anybody else, like, you know, if you have a good friend and you have things in common, you share those experiences, but also you get to learn from that person's perspective and it can sometimes give you uh, insight into your perspective. Yeah. And so you, grow, you can grow that way. Yeah, that's a really great analogy. I, um, it's, you tend to be more simpatico with people that are like you or that you have something in common with. Yeah. Good. And the gods are no different. Yeah. Um, what is it like to form a relationship with Persephone? Well, it's a little hard to explain. Um, it's like having a part of myself that is my own support system. Mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense, it to me it's um, it's like there's me, and then there's a sympathetic hand on my shoulder, mm -hmm. um, leading me through hard things, letting me know that it's everything's going to be okay. Um, and that hand is me, but it's also Persephone. So yeah. it, that's to explain it. It's kind of confusing, but it's um, it is kind of like um, going through the situation, but also being the one that's helping yourself through the situation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally resonate with that. I feel like I've not only from my own personal experience, but just lots of other witches and pagans that I've talked to about this, that there's this part within you where you can't tell where they begin and you end, you know, there's definitely, yeah. So, um, why do you pers what do you personally do as a follower of Persephone? Um, well, she asks a lot of growth for me. Mm. So um, that comes in the form of research and study and shadow work and public service. So it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was going to ask another question and I forgot. Um, are, there, are there any specific rituals that you could point to or... Um, specific actions that that she has you do that might be useful if that's not too personal a question um most of the time when we converse <clears throat> it's through meditation mm -hmm. so um a lot of times when she wants to talk to me she will ask me to uh, go into meditation so that she can better reach me and say what she needs to say yeah so there are rituals that I have done for her and with her, but a lot of our conversations happen in meditation. Sure, sure.
Cool. Um, when Persephone first reached out to you, how did you react? Um, well, I was looking at a pagan book of poetry, and uh, there was a poem in the book about a mother and a daughter, and <clears throat> it actually specifically mentioned the city that I was in at the time. <laughs> and <laughs> I, so then I really got to looking at the book and realized that it was all about Persephone. And then after, um, after that, I started thinking about it. Um, I started reflecting uh, back to the past and, you know, certain events. And I realized that she had been there the entire time and uh, was just trying to get reach out to me and get my attention. And after realizing that, I, I don't want to say that I felt like an idiot. That feels like a strong word. <laughs> but right. also, I, I feel like I hadn't been near as attentive as I needed to be to, you know, to all the things that were going on. So Yeah, uh, absolutely. That resonates with me. It's interesting. I think you hit on some points. Um, about the gods that usually when they are reaching out to you there there's there's strange synchronicities that happen like in your case you're reading the book um about her and it's mentioning the town you're in so it's kind of like hey wake up pay attention like like you said they're trying to get your attention yeah. um definitely. definitely um so what was your initial reaction when persephone asked you to work with her um, well, my initial reaction was kind of one of, I was, you know, like I said, I was being kind of an idiot about things, not mm -hmm. being attentive enough. Sure. Um, and I realized that she had not only been there the entire time, but she was waiting on me to be attentive. So then I was like, oh, well maybe now's a good time to do the being of attentiveness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. I totally got that too. Like it, it, that resonates with my own experience too, with Apollo that looking back, I'm like, Oh, duh. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. for a long time, it was, everyone else seemed to see it, but me, I'm like, why me? Everyone's like, well, duh. And I'm like, I don't get it. And they're like, you're an idiot. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I, I totally get that. Um, yeah, and, um, before this event, nobody had ever said specifically Persephone, but then when I started talking about her to people, their reaction was, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, what is the most rewarding factor about working with Persephone? Um, the most rewarding thing is that I'm consistently, I get consistently surprised by my own personal strengths. Mm. And while I don't, I, I don't normally recognize that strength in myself, Persephone definitely recognizes it. And um, not only does she recognize it, but she uses that to challenge me mm. in ways that I'm really never expecting. Yeah. Like, at this point, I feel like I should be expecting it, but it's, it, a lot of times it just seems to come out of left field. And then I realize what it is either during or after the fact. Sure, sure, sure. So what would you say is the least rewarding factor uh, about working with Persephone? Um, the least rewarding is that because I am human i have kind of inadvertently framed the work that i do with her in the context of like a, a relationship mm -hmm. and i don't think she necessarily sees it that way so it kind of sometimes leaves me holding the ball sure and um getting hung up emotionally on things that really don't matter sure what, what do you mean by uh, a relationship um, I think relationships between the deity and the practitioner are, in ways, they can be more intimate than, like, a, a human-to-human relationship. 
-hmm. but they're also deities aren't um there aren't deities aren't strictly monogamous (laughs) right right um i think if you're especially if you're a a person that um is very a strong monogamous kind of person Mm -hmm. it you have a lot to deal with in that realm like you you have to adjust to the deity's way of doing things sure and it can it can leave you feeling um left out a little Mm -hmm. um and so then you you have emotions that aren't necessarily tied to your actual relationship with the deity that you've inadvertently tagged on to the relationship and you so you have to deal with those emotions so that's where the you know holding the ball kind of comes in um i'm having to deal with those emotions and figure out why i'm having those and you know do the work around those so um i think sometimes it's it's just me putting more on the relationship than than is actually there Mm -hmm. but i think also sometimes it is persephone pointing out things that i have problems with and Mm. holding me accountable for those and making me deal with them yeah absolutely That, that makes a lot of sense so overall, it sounds like you're saying that if you go into working with Persephone with expectations that it's going to be like a human relationship where she owes you certain intimacies that you might also expect from another human, that that you're probably not going to get that from her. Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Right, right. Um what is a piece of advice you wish someone would have told you before forming a relationship with Persephone? Um, well, because she has asked a lot of growth from me, um, I've had to get used to that. So, um, and growth is not always comfortable. In fact, it's rarely ever comfortable. <laughs> so I've, <True. laughs> I've had to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, which yeah. is quite hard. Right. I know, you know, I have some uh, some control issues, so that makes it a little bit harder for me. But that's basically been the uh, the overarching theme of, theme of our relationship is be comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> absolutely. But I feel like, in general, too, the the gods when they see that our relationship with them could become more codependent and not help to further our own growth, that's when they're like, nope, we can't do that. Like, Mm -hmm. that's going to cause problems for you. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I I get that. Um, So is there anything else that you would like to share about working with Persephone? Um, Well, I think that the limited role that she plays in the mythology is very misleading to who she actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, she's basically written as a one dimensional tragic character. That's only there for the purposes of explaining why weather happens. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> right. I feel like that's, it's totally, um, it's not very fair to her because she's, uh, She's always appeared to me as a multifaceted and complex uh, individual. And, she, you know, she goes from innocence to experience. She goes from one level of perception to another. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes from being on the earthly plane to going underground and then coming back. So she has this um, kind of limnescape kind of track throughout the year every year Mm -hmm. so i I feel like with working with her i realized the complexities and the sympathetic character traits in myself and um that i don't think that i would have seen otherwise um i don't think that she should be limited to a tragic footnote Mm -hmm. um just like i don't think that 
any human should be limited to a tragic footnote. We all have our own personal story. So, right. uh, but she's just, she's always been very dynamic and loving and sometimes harsh, but always interesting to me. Yeah. I love that. Very good stuff. Well, thank you so much, Brittany. That was really great. Very good information. I'm sure um, everyone out there will also think so. And again, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so there you have it. Just a few thoughts and some good information on one person's walk with the blessed goddess Persephone. I hope you have all found this valuable and have enjoyed it and uh, would appreciate your likes and subscribes. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and blessed be. Love you all.